call after 35 years old, and we learn a lot from each other. Uh, the makeup of, of the house, there's 75 seminarians from all over the United States, and uh, with so many diverse different types of backgrounds. Uh, we have 10 people from the military, you know, strong mem men of faith that were colonels and special forces oper operatives, and, and a, a big presence in the house that I don't think people would expect. Um, eight, of the, eight of our seminarians actually have children. Uh, they were widowed or, um, you know, somehow were annulled from their w marriage and uh, they, they do have children. So, and then, you know, we have a lot of teachers and uh, so we learn a lot from each other's experience. Well, that's amazing. Thank you. I, I, you know, um, it's like you mentioned before, it's like a different dynamic with, um, you know, like you said, older, um, older seminarians that, uh, you know, it's just a different dynamic, different experiences, and you learn from each it, other. It's yeah. really beautiful how God touches each of our lives in a different way. I mean, he's called me as my my career for 18 years. I was a stock market regulator. I enforced the securities and exchange laws uh, for brokerage firms uh, throughout the country. Um, and, you know, that was a great calling. I was really helping to protect people, and I had great success in life. I had, you know, certain, you know, I, I was able to afford, uh, you know, things in my life and, you know, take vacations and actually live a life that a lot of people dream of. And, uh, but there was always something missing. And I was, I was, you know, looking for happiness and maybe more success or more, uh, career success, or maybe even relationships, looking for relationships, that happiness was really inside my heart all along in Jesus' presence in my life. And now coming to this calling really brought me more peace and, and happiness than I thought ever possible. So without all that success in my career and in life, um, it, it was never complete without the peace of Jesus. Mm. And can you tell us a little bit more about, was there any... Um, particular moments where you thought to yourself, oh, maybe God is calling me to be a priest uh, am among all of this experience, or um, how did you, ha I guess, discern or slowly come to that? Uh, were there any... Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it happened very naturally and very organically, I would say, um, that over time that I found that what I was doing in my days was going to daily mass to to be a part of my parish family to be there to help them and they helped me and and they really served as my family and and over time i said all right what do i want to do in my life what would be natural that wouldn't be work if, if i love what i do and never have to work a day in my life and it it would just opened up that that the teaching the lessons of the lord that brought me so much happiness um, really filled me to help others. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't fail. Every time that um, I go out to try to help others, that I seem to get more out of it. And so much happiness to, to see them happy mm -hmm. and to, to bring that peace of Jesus to them. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. So it was, it was a process, and you went to daily Mass, and you just felt that this is really fulfilling me, you know? You know, I, I guess like everybody else that in, in today's world, we're really pressed, pressed to be perfect. And to be honest, I would, pr I would pray for that 5% of my life that I wanted to be better. Lord, I want a family. I want a wife. I want a better job. I want better relationships. I want this. I, 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 I. And once I stopped saying I, and I said, you know, this 95% of my life is beautiful. Why am I ignoring that? There's five percent that I want to be better. Why don't I just and I, I just focused on things of Jesus, focused on the positives and all these blessings. And wouldn't you know it over time that Lord just giving my life up to the Lord, he opened up to something maybe more beautiful. Be more beautiful for me in a family that I always wanted that is bigger now and you know, every day at St. Catharines, we have 150 young people coming there and for camp. And, uh, we, you know, we celebrate, we, I pray with them and we, we enjoy activities. And, um, and then, you know, there's seniors there that, that need help and many brothers and sisters with the Knights of Columbus and all the other activities there. So they really filled my, my want for a family and to act as that father, bringing them to a way of happiness and peace. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. Thank you. It, I think, um, 
Yeah, that's a great lesson for all of us, right? With the um, positive, focusing on the blessings and the positive, because you're right, it, it is every day we, we kind of get caught up in that. And um, like you mentioned, you know, that you're interacting with the different groups of people in the parish and there's so much to do. You know, St. Catherine's is, is an active parish, so that's that's wonderful, you know. And then you get to retreat to the Adoration Chapel too, which is which is a blessing and yeah. there's a lot of stuff going it's on. It's an amazing mm-hmm. life. You know, I'd have never been happier. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. And and our dear Bishop Barrows really takes great care of me. He's really a great shepherd and, mm-hmm. and authentically he, he comes up, he knows about me. He knows what I need to to develop and become a, a priest someday, God willing. Mm-hmm. And please, everybody that's listening, if you could pray for me, mm-hmm. include me in your prayers, because really, it's only through the grace of God that it's possible. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, always, we're always keeping you in prayer, listeners. And yes, please pray for um, for Lou, for all of us here, the guests. Um, you know, Trevor, Joe, all of us here. You know. We wouldn't be where we are without you and, and your beautiful prayers and just listening. So thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to um, ask Rosie a little bit of, um, we'll just uh, switch gears for, for a second. Mm-hmm. And I know she has a beautiful story about um, her faith and how, you know, Jesus came to her life. So um, tell us a little bit about that. And um, were you um, brought up Catholic in, in the faith of, uh, you know, from did you? See? I've actually bounced around quite a bit because, um, mm-hmm. well, I the the way the way it started was uh, my family wasn't really going to church, um, and I mean probably for like just like special occasions, but um, there wasn't necessarily like like a, a strong like religious background. And one one day when I was like like two years old. To, I, was, I was like kind of young. Um, they were, we were driving um, down the road and we saw people having a candlelight vigil for the 9-11 victims. And um, my mom said that I had asked her like, mom, what are they doing? And my mom said, they're praying. Um, and then I just kind of was like, huh, like I want to do that. Like, let's go over there. So my mom pulled over and like we went and we prayed and she said, I really liked it. Um, And then we started going to church from there on. Um, First, I went to um, Howell Hills Community Church in um, right off of uh, Straight Path. Um, And Dix Hill is really close to my house. It's a really cute little church. Um, That's where I was baptized and I received communion. Um, But that's Protestant. It's non-denominational. Yeah, it's non-denominational Protestant. Mm -hmm, So. mm -hmm. Then I went to um, Episcopalian uh, elementary and middle school. So then I had like an Episcopalian kind of um, background. And then I went to St. Anthony's Catholic high school and high school. So um, definitely have seen, yeah, Mm -hmm. seen um, a wide variety of the faith and um, so I don't, I, I guess I wouldn't be able to say that I'm Catholic because I wasn't baptized um, or, I mean, or received the communion um, through the Catholic Church, but um, definitely have like a very like strong, like spiritual background from everything. And, um, you know, I, I, I try to bring that into um, school. I'm part of like the Catholic club. I was part of the Catholic club at Stevenson University and uh, University of Miami. Um, and yeah, it just really helped me through, you know, a lot of my friends, like if it ever comes up in conversation, a lot of my friends say that like they wish they could have a faith or they have like a lot of doubts and I don't know, I don't know where I would be without it. I don't know how people function on a daily basis without it, without, you know, taking a lot of things hardly, you know, um, and I definitely use it as a crutch during like hard times and, um, also just to be grateful during good times so Mm -hmm. well that's beautiful thank you that's that's great you can you you know about the other um the other denominations and we're you know we're all one and and i like how pope francis is always yeah Yeah. were you gonna mention that too yeah Yeah. absolutely Mm -hmm. i'm so proud of you rosie thank you Uh, you're (laughs) courageous at that you know young age and i'm i'm jealous i wish i would have uh heard that calling earlier 
I think when I interviewed, they asked, like, why not earlier? What mm -hmm. happened? Yeah. And I was really that restless soul that was always bouncing around and running for other things to hear that whisper. Mm -hmm. And that whisper is what changes things. And I know, I th thank you for your, your, your talk about your faith. Thank you. And uh, I, I'd like to encourage you and, and to, to, to challenge you maybe a little bit. Um, over at St. Catharines, we have a perpetual adoration chapel. Mm. And it's a beautiful place. It's a really quiet place. Mm -hmm. And it's good for really con uh, uh, prayer, quiet prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And that changed my life. And I think at a while, for a while, I discerned which faith was for me and whether mm -hmm. Roman Catholic was really for me and whether, as Roman Catholics, we believe in the real presence of Jesus right. in that. And one of the things that I look up on YouTube is the, the miracle at Buenos Aires with our the beloved uh, Jorge Bogolio, our, our president, our, our Pope, uh, Pope Francis, um, and the miracle that had with him. And I encourage you to go into that, to the Eucharist and spend a little time. Sure, I think I'd it, love to. I think it'd really change, I think it would be a beautiful experience. So tell us, tell us about that miracle. I'm not too familiar. What, what happened in... Buenos Aires, wow. There was, Jorge Bogolio at the time was the Archbishop of Argentina. And that was Pope Francis, and uh, before he became Pope Francis. And at one day at Mass, somebody had taken the Eucharist, and we're always very protective of the Eucharist because it is the body of, of our Lord and Savior. It is. So we, we, somebody had taken that and, and left it on the ground. Oh. Which is is, mm -hmm. is is a big trouble. So somebody, we, the the priest came to the back and take took it off the ground and put it into a a bowl with water to dissolve, and then they put it back into the earth to properly uh, dispose, you know, to, mm -hmm. to pass it on. And what had happened was when it was in the water, it transformed and it became bloody, pussy, and things. Mm -hmm. Over the course of six months, they took pictures of it. They had an atheist doctor look at it, and he said, I, I know what this is. I know what this is, without a doubt. This is a heart muscle. And I could tell you by the makeup of the blood cells in it, I don't remember exactly, I think it's white blood cells, that this person was under stress. Like, he was getting beaten at the time. And I know it's a Middle Eastern man. Mm -hmm. And then, so what wow. they did, this really, they explained to this doctor after he performed, provided his report and he said listen you know I, I can't explain this this shouldn't be living tissue at this point just sitting in water for a month I can't explain it and so what they did they took that tissue at that point and compared it to a Eucharistic miracle that happened 400 years ago mm -hmm. and a piece of material from that and they were the same person our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in that so you now you have science mm -hmm. science telling you about the presence of that in, in the Eucharist. And, and you, I'm going to tell you, Rosie, that our faith is so much more than something learned, but it's something felt in your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and when you put forth that heart, um, you'll feel the presence of the Lord in you. And, and, and when you're in front of the, uh, the Blessed Sacrament at the Adoration Chapel, um, you, you're going to experience beautiful things. Yeah, I'd love to come. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, I know you live close by Dix Hills, but um, maybe we could do a little bit of research and see what chapels are a little bit close by. I know there's some some other churches, or if you mm -hmm. just sit in front of the tabernacle, you know Jesus is Jesus is just there, but he's not he's not outside, sure. but he's he's still in there. They have a lot of events <laughs> around, so we can find something. But um, yeah, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that just reminded me of the so many other Eucharistic miracles that happened around the world that, um, you know, that is just a reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When recently we were at Quo Vadis at the seminary in Huntington, and there were 46 uh, girls and 46 boys from high school, and we were teaching them more about God. And I was praying a lot at that time, spending front time in front of the sacrament. Lord, please give me something to give these young people. And... It brought me, it's a funny thing that happened. I, I was researching and I came up with a saint. or not, He's not quite a saint yet. He's being venerated. Um, he's a 15-year-old boy. Mm. Um, he was diagnosed with leukemia, a very painful thing. And he gave up his suffering to the Lord for the church and for the Pope. 
and we honor his virtue because of that. But he was a special young man. He liked computers like the, like most young people and, and video games and things. And he used that experience to benefit the church. He put together lists of all the Eucharistic miracles. His name is Carlo Acunas, and he's from Italy, and he's currently being considered for sainthood. He's a 15-year-old young man. He was born in, born in 91 and passed in 2006 oh. um, at 15 years old, but is mm -hmm. considered to be a saint because of his commitment to the church, and, and he really... You know, he's a regular young person that made a difference, right. that did what, whatever they were called to do. Like, I'm called to be a priest, God willing, or a seminarian. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people are called to run a radio show. <laughs> some people are called to mm -hmm. marriage and life, you know, as, as an example of Catholic, Catholic faith. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you. I, I didn't know. Um, it's, it's inspiring because he, he you know, was born in in our time and and you know we could really relate to him as as a saint and um, I wanted to ask you I know you mentioned before how the Eucharist really changed your life and adoration tell us a little bit more about that um, was there a particular moment or just how how does going to adoration really um, I you know I think it's you know the faith and and Jesus is is a lot like any relationship that the more you go to Jesus and the more that you try to learn him and be more like him, that the more you grow with him. And the time in front of the, the Blessed Sacrament, I mean, I wish I had done it when I was Rosie's age or even younger. And, and how much trouble that would have, that would have uh, alleviated me from <laughs> kind of being prayerful and thinking my life out a little better. I mean, it makes sense to, to kind of think out your path and take a little quiet time mm. and, and just to be patient with ourselves, mm -hmm. to, to be gentle with ourselves, not to beat us up and, oh, rushing off to do the next thing, but take a little quiet time with the Lord and allow peace in our mind and a little chance for the Lord to kind of sway our thought, to give us clarity. And, and how has it changed my life? I, I've come to like epiphanies somehow, some miraculous way during these things that, that changed my life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, like I said, I used to always beat myself up. I, want, I needed to do this, or I needed to find the right relationship, or I, I stresses in life. And when I was in front of the Blessed Sacrament, I would come up with clarity and said, well, you know, 95% of my life is beautiful. What do I want? Everything? Mm -hmm. Not even Jesus. You know, Jesus suffered. And it's something that we work on now, to have, what that suffering why, why that's necessary and, and, and how to endure that. And, you know, I deal with a lot of, uh, a lot of things still. I mean, that, that you know, my, my father was recently sick. And it's been interesting in my formation issues, uh, in my formation, because um, of the number of, of funerals at, at the St. Catherine's. So as my father was sick and kind of in the hospital, I would be having the funerals at St. Catherine's and kind of contemplating on a deeper level mm -hmm. all these things. And that's where the grace of God comes in and gives you peace and comfort. I agree. I, it's actually funny that you, that you mentioned um, the way that what, you know, when you are in, in front of um, the tabernacle, how you're, you were able to come to like epiphanies and spending time, um, you know, thinking, just be able, be able to um, better yourself just from like meditation and things like that. Um, Barbara actually um, suggested that I start the morning pages. Um, it, morning pages in like the artist's way are like these, uh, it's like a self-help book to, um, it, which is basically every morning you write three pages, bef like the first thing you do. Um, and it really helps and, you know, you know, like a lot of like during these pages, I'm asking God for like help with certain things in my life. And, um, you know, it, it really helps me define like, you know, what issues I do have going on or and then or suddenly just um, solutions to issues that I didn't I didn't think of before. Um, and you know, these pages are just meant to be like anything that's going on in your head. Like if you wrote blah, 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 blah for three pages, you would still be doing them correctly. Like there's no wrong way to do them. Um, and it's just like a really great way 
to um, kind of dump like whatever's going on in your subconscious and then you, you're able to think a lot more clearly like throughout the day. Um, so I see that like you've been able to do that with prayer and going to like the chapel and like you know there's like a bunch of different ways you can do things like that. Um, and it's, it's worked wonders for me. I, I've suddenly, I've been able to let go like a lot of like my stuff. I've able to also been, had like more clarity with like my relationships. Um, it's also helped my handwriting a lot because you'd be surprised and <laughs> forget how now with my, my laptop and everything, I don't, I don't write anymore. I just type. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's also like, oh, there's like a lot of things I, I didn't realize I was like afraid of doing because, you know, I wanted to be perfect, like, especially with like, like art or something like I didn't want to touch a blank canvas because like I was afraid I was just going to mess it up. And then I just have to, you know, then I didn't want to. But then, you know, now if you don't actually do it, then you're just not painting at all. And that's like, you know, that's just like a metaphor for like a lot of things. If you're like too afraid to be doing something. So a lot of it was just, you know, finally like kind of ripping the Band-Aid and just actually doing it and it feels great. And um, there's just like a lot of things that God has like enlightened me with recently and it's awesome. Just yeah. focusing on Jesus, removing that doubt. Exactly. That, 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 that all the things of other side, that doubt, that fear, just giving it up to God, just doing your thing beautifully and perfect like the rest of us. Yeah. That's yeah. all. I love I love journaling. I try to journal in, in adoration and like you said, I just want to jump off what you said. I feel like as you're writing, like the answers come or you know, God is speaking to you right. and for some people it's it comes a little differently, you know, like um it's um I know we had a guest um I think last month um yeah, she she kind of wrote it out more as she would write all of her stuff and then she would ask God what God wants to tell her but for me it's it's a little differently it's kind of like within you know as I'm writing like I kind of you get a sense of like what God is trying to tell you or the clarity comes or even if for some people even if you're not writing you just sit quietly so um yeah we just need those those moments and especially in the morning that's great you know you're turning yourself to God right right away in the morning and right. you're just I'm sure you start the day more refreshed and more energized and more, okay, like, you know, I know what direction to go now right. with this. And that's really comforting. So that's, that's wonderful. It's even um, also like, um, some, you know, some, the way that, the way that the, the, the book is like God, like the great creator, like works through you. So you have to stop being afraid to, to, you know, write because, what it's not it's actually like none of your business what you're actually writing because it's just like God using you as a tool and um, that was like a really interesting concept to me like the fact that like it's not you know what, what I'm about to do is like God's will and like I'm just supposed to do it you know um, so that's definitely given me like a lot of freedom where I don't have to stress about like what you know what I'm about to write or like what kind of like you know epiphanies I'm gonna have because it's like it's all coming through God um, yeah, like that God is in all things and God is in you. So like yeah. he's automatically going to be part as long as you have the right intentions. And of course, you know, which, which is, which is that. But. It's, it's amazing how many lessons we get every day. Lessons, either things that we're working on in our life that the gospel scripture seems to speak to that. Mm -hmm. 